very good morning to all of you. Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And today is a valedictory service. And the valedictory service is conducted to acknowledge the hard work of the graduating students and all to, to say goodbye to all of them. It is not just a goodbye and sending them with a powerful word of God and commissioning them to the world to go and serve God. So that is why we have this valedictory service. And I would like to welcome all of you for this valedictory service this morning. And as we go further, and I would like to read a scripture portion for all of you. And if you have your Bibles, please turn with me. Paul's letter to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and what you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, interest to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And this is the day where we interest to the faithful men and women who are trained and fully equipped to do, to do a ministry in the world from Hindustan Bible Institute. And all of you know, and we have been training men and women for the ministry for past 68 years. And we have graduated more than 12,000 students across the world. And, and they're all in the different parts of the world and serving God faithfully. So this is a great moment for HBI to have this wonderful valedictory service. And as we begin, and let us open this service with a word of prayer. And we have uh, Reverend James Kaiser, the director of CMCTI and EC, and I would like to request him to come forward and open this valedictory service with a word of prayer. Shall we look to God in prayer? <clears throat> Most gracious and heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful day. Lord, morning by morning, your mercies are new, your grace is new. Thank you for this new mercy and grace. Lord, it's purely because of your grace we are able to come together in this manner and give glory and honor to you and sing praises to you all the time, O oh Lord. Lord, especially we, our hearts are filled with gratitude and thanksgiving for the way in which you have led us throughout this academic year in all dimension, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for all the students. Lord, thank you for giving us the provision, the protection, and also the healing to all our students so that they can do better in their life, O oh Lord. In the midst of all the difficult situation, you helped us to sail through in this academic year so that as an institution, as a management, we were able to do and deliver a lot of things to our people and we IQ people for your glory, O oh God. Lord, thank you for all the provisions and the blessings you have granted to us, O oh Lord. Lord, thank you for helping the faculty members and also helping them to be more faithful in delivering their goods and also equipping the saints in, in this particular institution, O oh God. Thank you for all the good things. Lord, we commit the entire program into your mighty hand. Let your name may be glorified. All our singing, all our reading, all our exhortation may bring glory and honor to you and you alone. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Kaiser, the director of CM City and EC, for opening this service with a word of prayer. And when Britishers left our country, and when the nationalization started taking place, and that's where the Father Gupta listened to the voice of God and the vision that God has given to him is that develop one Indian to reach another Indian. Train one Indian to reach another Indian. So the heartbeat of HBI is to develop indigenous leaders and we want to see them as a God class transformation leaders. And we always give respect and value the culture system that we have in India. And we cherish always the son of the soils as they go and become the movement builder. So indigenous thing is the heartbeat of HBI. Even as we continue to celebrate and move forward with the validity service, let us worship God with the indigenous music. So now I would like to request Reverend Theophilus, coordinator of new non-residential program and faculty advisor to the library to come and help us worship God together as he leads indigenous worship. Good morning to you all. 
It's a great joy to be in the presence of God, especially as to worship and thank God for all God's mercies. Today we are going to sing some songs. I guess the students will be familiar with the songs that we are going to sing, but then the others, please learn with us together. So we're going to sing five songs, which are, um, we usually sing as bhajan. So, uh, uh, there are some, some Tamil songs are there. There are some Hindi songs. Uh, there is a, uh, uh, um, kind of a Malayalam song, sorry, uh, Hindi song is always also there. So please join with us and sing this song. Mm. Please sing. Anbutarumandavare, Aravane cum petavare, Udin in Rukumbid in Rome, Adi Padi Mahil in Rome, Udin in Rukumbid in Rome, Adi Padi Mahil in Rome, Anbutarumandavare, Aravane cum petavare, pleasing, Anbutarumandavare, Aravane cum petavare, Udin in Rukumbid in Rome, Adi Padi Mahil in Rome. Kudin in Rukumbid in Rome, Adi Padi Mahil in Rome, Poetry, 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 Kadaula ye poetry, 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 Kadaula ye poetry. Arultar meet pare, Aruhil near Kum Tolare, Arultar meet pare, Aruhil near Kum Tolare, Umpanil yena yavando, needy kaka, Ulaikavando. Umpanil in a yavando, needy kaha, ulai kavando, poti poti poti, yesua ye poti, 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 unditalum tu yavare, yenil valum anasandre. Unditalum tu yavare, yen nil valum anasandre. Uravai send the vando muirka kapad gindro. Uravai send the vando kapad gindro. Poti poti poti, avi yare poti. Poti poti, avi yare poti. Poti poti poti, avi yare poti. Poti poti poti, avi yare poti. Anbutharum andavare, aravane kum petavare. Please sing. Anbutharum andavare, aravane kum petavare. Kudi nindru kumbudu kindro, maadi paadi maghilu kindro. Kudi nindru kumbudu kindro, maadi paadi maghilu kindro. Poti poti poti, kadaula ye poti. Poti poti poti, kadaula ye poti. The next song is a Hindi song, Jai Jagadish Namo, we will sing together. I would like you all to sing with happiness when we are in the presence of God. Please sing with us. So let us all stand up and clap our hands and sing this button together. Jai Jagadish Namo, Jai Taragadeva Namo. Jai Jagadish Namo, please sing. 
I think everybody knows. Please join together and sing with me. Nile asma ke paar jayenge, mera Yeshu rehta waha. Please sing. Nile asma ke song is mukti dilaye shnam please join together please clap your hands and sing mukti dilaye yeshu naam shanti dilaye yeshu naam please sing mukti dilaye yeshu naam shanti dilaye yeshu naam yeshu daya ka behta sagar yeshu Suheda Tamaha, Ne Suheda Tamaha. 
we pray father we thank you lord for this wonderful day we thank you for taking us so long through this journey taking calling us for you are responsible to be your instruments of your kingdom we thank you we ask your presence to be with us as we meditate upon your word and as we commission this children of yours we ask this in jesus precious name amen please be seated Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Theophilus, for this beautiful time of leading, leading us into worship. And once J.K. Rowling says this, be present, be present and open to the movement that is unfolding before you because your life is made up of movement. So do not miss them by being lost in the past and anticipating future. And you can't redo the past. Future is not in your hand, but in his hand. So let us enjoy every moment as we celebrate this even this morning, the validatory service, and this time to welcome all of you. And to give the welcome address, I would like to request Reverend Dr. Paul Ebenezer, the coordinator of doctoral studies, to come forward and give us the welcome address. I greet you all in the master's name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a great honor and the privilege for me to render this welcome address on this special occasion. And it is a very precious moment for each and every one of us. Because aside the fact that this service underlines the successful years of Hindustan Bible Institute College, in its realm of imparting knowledge, influencing the lives of every individual, impacting the societies and communities, and transforming them and developing godly leaders and transformational leaders in order to extend, enlarge the kingdom of God in the face of the earth. This morning is a great privilege for me to have our chief guest in our midst. The chief guest for this validated service is Reverend Dr. John M. Prasad, the director of the Center for Peace Studies, Meadows Christian College, Tambram, Chennai. We cordially welcome you, sir, for this great occasion. And it is not just an honor, it's a privilege for the entire institution to host him as a dignitary for this occasion. As a token of love, honor, and appreciation, I would like to invite the vice principal to come forward and honor the chief guest with the shawl. May I invite the chief guest to come forward. Let's put our hands together and give a big round of applause. We are privileged to have the invaluable presence of our president in the online mode today to facilitate this occasion and also we would like to acknowledge our senior vice president we cordially invite you ma'am for this occasion i would like to invite our vice principal and the register of the college for this occasion indeed it's a great joy to see our well wishers being joined in the program in the online mode and we would like to acknowledge their love and support towards the institutional growth and institutional development. This morning, it's a great joy to have all the HBA staffs, ALT members, and the faculty crew, and student friends, very particularly the graduates, who are the part and parcel of this great occasion. See, we welcome you. Let's put our hands together and give a big round of applause for these graduates. Without you, there is no program today. Therefore, we would like to welcome you one and all. I hope and request your kind cooperation throughout the service to have the grand success. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Paul Ebenezer for this wonderful welcome address. 
John Chrysostom, in his graduation address, he says this, we do not need magic to change the world and we carry all the power we need inside ourselves already. The power of the Holy Spirit carry his presence, cautious to his alert and confirm yourself to the calling of God. So that is the beautiful quote of John Chrysostom. And our president he is such a kind. He always carries the spirit of God within him. And wherever he goes, he carries his presence. He always listens to God and he executes what actually God wants him to do. It is such a privilege to have our president on online and he has given his greetings and his blessings to the graduates. So I would like to request our IT team to help us play our president's greetings and blessing on screen. Greetings to all of you in the very, very precious name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's an awesome privilege for me to be able to extend my wishes all the way from the United States to the graduating class this morning. It's been a privilege to watch you over the three and two years that you have been students at Hindustan Bible Institute to take steps and to make changes and to watch you grow in the knowledge of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the call that he has placed upon your life. It is my hope that as you continue to serve the Lord, that you will continue to work and continue to be effective in carrying out the mission that God has placed on your life. And I want to wish you all of God's blessings at this time, for now and for all the ministry that God has planned for you, that you will be very successful in your efforts and that God will put his hand upon you and he will bless you and you will experience his presence in all the things that you do and that you will never forget the things that we have taught you. I wanna share with you three very important things as I wish you this morning. Principle number one, never move away from the authority of God. We have taught you to hear his voice. We've taught you to understand his voice. And it is my hope that as you continue to walk in this journey of serving him, that you will always remember to stay under his authority. He is God. He is king. Don't let anything else your friends your traditions your parents your whoever it is don't let that authority move away from you let god be your leader and your guide the rest of your life number two always make god's word the center of your life he gave us his revelation and that revelation is very, very important. And it's my hope that as you continue to walk this journey in a personal relationship with God, that his word will be your ever guiding principle of your life because he has blessed you and made you a blessing for the nations of the earth. And finally, I wanna say, don't ever forget God's mission. He said to go into all the world and make disciples of all peoples. And it's my hope that as you become God's instrument, having been prepared and trained, whether you're going with an MDiv or an MTH, it is my hope that each of you will take the learning of our faculty and allow our faculty's influence and the ministries of HBI on your life to carry you through the rest of your journey because God will be your guide. His word will be your counsel. His Holy Spirit will lead you every step of the way and that you will be in season and out of season, ever prepared to do one thing and that is to fulfill the mission of God and God alone. 
don't get distracted stay focused and god will bless you and make you a blessing to the nations of the earth god bless you and the lord be with you and may his countenance shine upon all of you all the days of your life as you celebrate the last day of your time at hbi before you move forward into the ministry that god has extended to you i hope you'll all be able to come back for graduation and if you're there i will be there look forward to seeing you and god bless you and have a wonderful day today god bless you so we praise god for the beautiful words that came out of our president and i hope all the graduates you will take it seriously and you will apply them in your ministry field and wherever you are rc sprawl once he says this an encouragement is a powerful medicine to a dying soul where the dying soul will be rejuvenated and revived senior vice president is a, such a person and who is an encourager to all of us especially to the students and the students can always approach her and she is a great she is a great encouragement to all of the students and to us as well and it is a privilege for all of us to listen from the senior vice president as he comes gives a faculty address to the graduating class good morning this is the day that the lord has made and we will rejoice and it is a day because god reigns and such a joy for me to stand here on behalf of the ministries of hindustan bible institute the ministries i mean on behalf of the president and the behalf of the faculty and the entire staff to say thanks and we are so grateful to the lord for helping us to see another set of uh, students graduates uh, leaving this place and going into the mission field is something really very dear to my heart i know uh, brother johnson said this morning that when god called the founder to establish this organization he did tell him to say train one indian to reach another indian for jesus christ so always every time we see a graduate completing studies or her studies and leaving this campus is not a farewell it is actually a farewell to say please fare well in the mission of god it's such a joy to see these lovely uh, batch of students completing their studies today and stepping into a different world your bubble will be broken you will be out among the community to be part of the community but let your light so shine in this crooked world so that people who do not know the lord jesus will come to know him as their personal savior as hindustan bible institute stands for its purpose to give every man every woman every boy every girl an opportunity to hear understand and respond to the gospel and be discipled into communities of believers we send you into this world to introduce jesus to them i'm reminded of this uh, caption that we have for the new calvary church live the word and light the world that's what you are going to do all along these 3 years you have studied the word of god you have been shaped into spiritual formation into spiritual discipline so many faculty members have invested their lives into your lives they have poured in now you are going to pour out you have kept on receiving but the day has come you are going to be dispensers of god's word that has been given to you it's such a joy to see all of you i i mean as brother johnson said i truly had the privilege of connecting with all of you on a very regular basis on a personal basis in many situations and many settings being in your cell group class or being in the church or being in the leadership class or in the spiritual formation class it just gives me a joy because every time i am part of a class teaching a class i learn i learn from each one of you 
I am so vividly reminded and remembering the leadership class, especially when you all were presenting your purpose, your vision, what God wants you to do. I still remember. Whenever I remember, I pray for you all. I don't know whether you remember, I remember your vision. Whenever I'm looking at Chimre, I keep praying, Lord, his vision is to see that his entire uh, people group, Tanku, am I uh, pronouncing right? Tanku, <laughs> the word of God being translated into that language. He wants to start a translation movement where he can train others to translate the Bible into his language. Amazing. I remember Rajkumar writing a beautiful vision statement wanting to, it was something like competing with uh, Mr. Ma Google. That's the vision statement he had. I'm so uh, blessed to listen to the vision statement. I, I remember Bandana talking about working among the women at risk and the uh, children at risk in Nepal. She has a deep burden to minister to those women how she can be involved in their lives, equipping them. I remember uh, Anita talking about being a revolutionary social worker. I mean, I remember Kim, I mean, I, I can keep on telling what uh, Kamiji said, what Sangbai said, what Samson said. I remember all those things. But every time you are you wear in our classes, it's not only that we were, if you turn the first page of that book, it has an introduction. And we say, when you walk into this place, we want you to remember how you will be trained as a farmer. Farmer has to work hard. He has to till the ground. He has to plant the seed in right time, manure it, water it, Take off the weeds till you see a crop. We wanted you to remember to be an athlete. There is a goal. You need to persevere. You need to work hard. You need to have discipline so that you can reach that goal. Because HPI is not just interested in imparting just knowledge. HPI is interested in you. Shaping of your life shaping of your commitment to God because it's a God who has called you and he is faithful. And we want you to be continue to be faithful in the calling that God has given to you. It's very important, students. I know I really miss the previous batch. When they left, they were very uh, sorry about it. Maybe some of them are watching online. If you're watching online, we want to uh, truly tell you that you have been also a great blessing. The previous batch, I know we could not conduct valedictory service because of the lockdown. If you are watching, we want you to know that you have been a blessing and we really enjoy investing our lives into each one of you. And every time a person comes in, graduate through HBI, we are so, so, so happy because we are placing somebody among the people that do not know the Lord Jesus. You are going into the world as the light shining so brightly, showing forth and revealing the Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, I really want to uh, congratulate you for your hard work, sincerity, sleepless nights, it has not gone in vain. It was tough, but you have gained a lot of life teaching experiences. So any place you go, you can survive. You not just survive, you will thrive because HBI has invested not just knowledge, it has given you ministerial skills. It is more importantly, shaped you spiritually. So you can stand strong. Out in the world, it's filled with storm. You can soar above the storm with Jesus, revealing Jesus. I want to encourage all of you to just fix your eyes upon Jesus. 
just before i sit down i would like to read the prayer of paul for each one of you this is our desire this is our sincere prayer for all of you it's found in ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 onwards let me read this for you ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 onwards For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's our prayer for you, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generation forever and ever. God bless you all. Thank you, Mrs. Malani Asirwadam, the Senior Vice President for the address from the faculty. John Stott, in one of his preachings, says this, sometimes you find out what you are supposed to be doing by doing the things you are not supposed to do. Truth of the matter is, human beings are fragile, always need God's help. The truth of the matter is this, the human beings are always fragile, and need God's help. And we are going to listen to our dear students, the graduates, and how God has been so faithful unto them during the course of their studies over here. And we are we have two uh, graduates, one from MTH, Mr. Lal Sangmai Waipai. He will be coming and giving his speech. And soon after that, Miss Anita will be delivering her speech. So may I request Mr. Lal Sangmai Waipai to come and give your speech. A very good morning to all of us. First of all, I thank the Lord God Almighty for being so faithful and merciful in our lives. He alone is the sole sustainer, provider, and protector of our being. And secondly, I would like to thank the management for giving me this wonderful privilege to actually deliver the valedictory speech. And thirdly, I feel honored to have this privilege to be the valedictorian on behalf of my batch. I stand here today to testify God's faithfulness in our lives for the past three years and the impact Hindustan Bible Institute and College had in our lives for the past three years. A wise man once said, remember the days you prayed for the things you have now. Looking back to the beginning of our journey, it is still vivid in my eyes. Those academic orientation classes and the evening chapel orientation classes uh, under the mango tree where some of us dance and some of us sing. There are three reasons as to when we cannot see according to me. One is the obvious reason when we close our eyes. And two is when we are exposed to extreme darkness. And number three, is to when we are exposed to extreme brightness. And this third one is called flash blindness. It was in June 2018. It was hot, very hot. The sun was shining bright. And when we look forward to the future, we cannot see this day, the day that marks the end of those three years with so much discouragement, confusions surrounding us. Some of us suffer from cultural shock. Some of us suffer from the unfair climatic changes. And some of us 
we're not familiar with the new environment, but still then we submit ourselves at the hands of God. And God, Emmanuel, is faithful to us, and he was with us, and he is with us, and he will be with us. Today we are seated here in this chapel, in this church, as a graduating batch, as a outgoing student, all because of his faithfulness and his mercy. And therefore, all honor and all glory belongs to him. We had God's calling in our lives, and he led us here to Hindustan Bible Institute and College to train ourselves, to equip ourselves, so that we can effectively walk in his ministry of building his kingdom. We profoundly thank the president principal of Hindustan Bible Institute and College for accepting us to be his students. And we also would like to thank the senior vice principal, the vice principal and all the distinguished faculties for immensely, genuinely and generously pouring out yourself into us. You have helped us shape our worldviews. And clinically, you have helped us to put our thoughts and our understandings into perspective. Today, we are seated here in this room, in this church, boldly ready to go and lead any kinds of ministry that the Lord want us to do, all because of the knowledge and the training that you have imparted to us. It is worth mentioning that last year was a pandemic year, and it still continues. The wall stood still, and every establishment came to close, and even ours. And yet again, we are immensely grateful to the president principal of Hindustan Bible Institute and College for initiating the introduction of online education whereby we can continue our courses without any break and finally are on the process of graduating from this college without any break and hindrances. Our sincere appreciation and gratitude also goes out to all the non-teaching staff of Hindustan Bible Institute and College for being so helpful to us in every aspect of our lives. You all are always ready whenever we call out for help. We owe you and we are indebted to you. And a special mention also be made to our families and our sponsors who have been by our side thick and thin throughout these past three years. And to all my friends, James Joyce said, better pass boldly into that other world in the full glory of some passion than fade and wither this smelly with age. In the first month of those three years, we boldly put ourselves at the mercy of God and we decided to push forward to the end of the three years, which we cannot see and which we are not sure of by faith regardless of what it takes. Throughout these years, despite the struggles, the pain, the sleepless nights, and the pressures and the challenges that surrounds us, I can see that all of us discover our passion, our potential, and grow immensely in whatever our interests are. Today, I can see in our midst seated dynamic preachers, pastors, scholars, and missionaries. And beside God's faithfulness and God's mercy in our lives throughout the past three years, I would love to say that it is our hard work. Uh, I would love to say that our hard works, our perseverance, our endurance also pays off. Finally, valedictory service or a commencement service is always marked with two emotions. On the brighter side, it is a day where we are declared victorious of those three year struggles. And on the gloomy side, it is a day where we bid farewell to our near and beloved ones whom we consider as our family for the past three years. But on the other side 
of our emotion stands the Great Commission. After Jesus' ascension, the disciples could have flocked together and ministered together. But then God's purpose was different. He sent all the disciples to different parts of the world. Tradition holds that the disciples cast lots among themselves as to where they should go. And as a result of which, Apostle Thomas reached India in AD 52, according to the traditions. Today, my friends, I want you all to consider the commission and the commitment that we had for the Lord greater than our, the emotional attachment that we developed throughout these three years. The church needs our service and the mission fields are waiting for our services. And as we move into this ministry, as we move into our mission fields, I would like to encourage you all to not be discouraged or to not be intimidated, but hold on to the assurances of the Lord Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he will be with us till the end of the earth. I have said this, and I would love to say this again, that li life is a series of images. It passes us by like the towns and the buildings on the highways when we travel. However, this morning, let us all remember that those past three years were more than a fleeting image. It will live on in our hearts forever. And as we set our foot to go out from this place, I pray that may all of us conquer new fronts in life. May we find fulfillment in the Lord's ministry. And then let us all keep one another close in our hearts. And until then, may the good Lord keep us in his good, strong hands. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for this time. I want to thank God, uh, my parents, my teachers, staffs, and my fellow graduates who have made these three years a memorable moment of my life. It's my honor today to deliver the commencement speech for this incredible student body. I stand here and look back to the three years of my college days. It's just a wink of an eye. We class of 2021, in many ways, we are just the same as everyone before and after, just like this commencement speech. But you'll notice that this speech is not same as everyone. The speech begins with congratulations. I'm proud to tell you all that we have sailed and survived despite the storms. At Valley, we have done all our assignments, which we found difficult. We've taken classes that confused and inspired us. We all have dealt with issues beyond our abilities and strength, and we've grown as a result. So although it is a difficult time for all of us, as friends, we've taken another look. Maybe being grateful to live through a strange time such as this. There was a time when I wasn't sure whether I will be able to see this day. I can't speak for the entire graduating class, but I know that many others have felt the same way. And so while I could spend this time thanking to many of my teachers who have inspired, influenced, and impacted my life for who I am today, now I choose to speak to my peers, to everyone who is graduating. Today is for you. You can look at yourself in the mirror later tonight and know that you have fight all the odds that, have came, that you come across. Maybe it can be an unforgiving past, unfortunate situations, or any person who told you that you will never do it, but you did it. Yes, we all did it. Most commencement speeches will finish by calling upon to you make a profound impact statement on the world. Sometimes I think these commencement speeches ask too much of their graduates. But friends, I'm saying that we all cannot become next US president 
or some great CEO, but I'm not saying that we have to be the shakers or movers of this generation. But I'm saying, let's try for change. Let's stand for what we believe in. Let's be responsible. Let's be respectful. And let's be responsible citizens of heaven. I think if it's not for God, none of us would have come thus far. Thereby, I would like to conclude my speech with few lines of a song that I'm always encouraged of. On the mountains, I will bow my life to the one who set me there. In the valley, I will lift my eyes to the one who sees me there. When I'm standing in the mountain half, I didn't get there on my own. When I'm walking through the valley end, no, I'm not alone. You're the God of the hills and the valleys, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Sangma and Anita, for your valedictory speech. And thank you very much. And we are blessed to hear your speech. Again, I'm coming back to John Chrysostom. At the time of his um, uh, graduation, in other words, at the time of the where the time he will be commissioned to, to the mission field. And he said this, I have studied everything for four years. He says, I have studied everything for four years. Now I'm going to learn. So you have studied whatever you need to study for three years. Now you are going to learn. And Jesus said, I have given you training. I'm sending, to the, sending you to the world and among the wolves. And as you see, the process of our training at HBI, and we let, you, we let all of you to watch us, and we let all of you to join us. And now this is the time for us to join you, and later we will watch you. So thank you so much for allowing us to pour our lives into your life. So thank you so much once again. And now this is the time for all of us to listen a special song, a special number from our graduates. So I would like to request all the graduates to come forward and give your special number. It is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see.
great is thy faithfulness amen and god's faithfulness is so good he is always faithful in our lives and thank you so much graduate for the beautiful number and now let us listen to the scripture reading and if you have your bibles please turn your bibles to second peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 11 second peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 11 and i would like to request dear sister hepsi rajendran to come and read the scripture portion for us scripture portion taken from second peter first chapter verses 3 to 11 his divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness through this he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine natures and escape the corruptions in the world caused by evil desires for this very reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self control and to self control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our lord jesus christ but if anyone does not have them he is near sighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from this past sin therefore my brothers be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure for if you do these things you will never fall and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ thank you sister hipsy for the clear reading of the word of god and joshua 18 says this this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success and even as we are sitting together and this is a time for all of us to listen to the word of god let this word do not depart from your mouth and this is the word of god is going to be your with the light unto your path and as you are going to listen to the word of god from his servant and please tune our heart and mind towards it and it is a privilege for all of us to listen from reverend dr john m prasad the director of the center for peace studies mcc thambaram and i called ajan ajan is there any way that you can come and give us the validity address and he readily agreed i'm so happy that he has busy schedule there's so much on his plate and he said there is no time to breathe also there are so much on his plate but in midst of busy schedule and he has agreed to come and deliver the word of god and he has been with hbi and he has been guiding our student and he taught courses for hbi and his students are excelling in the mission field in a various part of our, part of our country it is such a privilege for all of us to have reverend dr john m prasad in our midst i would like to invite him to the pew please come and take your time a few comments before i begin some time ago before corona virus was around if somebody asked remove your mask it means you are trying to hide yourself and your true uh, personality is not seen so please remove your mask we are called to be people without mask but now we had been hearing announcement wear your mask <laughs> cover yourself and protect yourself uh, there is another thing that uh, came to my mind see the mask covers my face you can't see who i am but at least you can hear god's word i think it's something good that you don't see me today as you listen to god's word let his face shine upon you but you may wonder who is this person speaking uh, i'll just show my face i prefer to wear my mask mask as i speak also considering my age you may wonder how old i am but at least i'll just show my face for a second and i will wear my mask and okay this what okay we are listening to the lord and his word let me begin my very dear 
graduating students, the principal and the president uh, of uh, Hindustan Bible Institute, who uh, would be probably listening to us online, the vice principal, senior vice president, office bearers, and any board members who may be here or may be listening elsewhere, all the faculty members and all the other staff of Hindustan Bible College, dear parents and dear ones of those uh, who are graduating, and any others who are part of this moment of the spiritual journey of the people of God. Okay. May I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this very special occasion of the Violet Decree Service of 2021. The name of Hindustan Bible College, Bible Institute and College has been imprinted in the history of Christian mission and the Christian church in India over the last 60 year plus years, mainly through the impact created throughout the nation of India and many other countries by, uh, or by many of the 12,000 and more young men and women who have passed through the corridor, corridors of this esteemed institution. Graduates, you who stand in line to join the vast stream of witnesses and seeking to make a difference to the extent of the knowledge and glory of our Lord Jesus Christ in this beloved nation of ours and elsewhere. I am keen to remind you some thoughts from the word of God that will keep you from falling, from being ineffective and from being unproductive in your ministry. All these three words are taken from the scripture lesson that was read to us. <clears throat> By the way, I wish and I had requested our vice principal to give the entire text of what I am speaking. So you will have a copy. I hope uh, he will be able to set, circulate that to you. <clears throat> All of us are in a significant journey, individually and collectively. Okay. As individuals, we are in our Christian journey. As a Christian community, God's people, we are in a collective journey. Any journey has a destination or a goal. A journey without a goal is described as a wave of the sea, tossed by the wind. Both by Paul, he mentions the same word in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. 14. And James also refers to the same phrase in James chapter 1, verse 6. We begin with the assumption that you are stepping into an important segment of your journey as individuals and the journey of the people of God as a community. As people who have been chosen to belong to God and chosen to lead the people of God in various capacities, we need to have a very clear perspective of the Alpha and Omega of our journey or in other words, the beginning and the end of our journey. The reminder of Peter, not just to the leaders, but all those who follow Christ that we read in uh, Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10 is this. Be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. Why? Why do we have to think so much about making our calling and election so sure, so that you will not fall. Very specifically, clearly, crystal clear told. Make your calling and election sure. If you do that, you will not fall. You will certainly not fall. So then there is a, an occasion of falling, failing, giving up, terrible end to many God's children, God's servants. Why should we make this extra effort to make our calling and election sure? Peter gives out the reasons why this exercise is very crucial in the journey of every believer, especially in those who go ahead of others, leading them. So you are chosen to go ahead of others, leading them. So you are also traveling and others are following you in their journey. The history of Christian ministry Okay, let me repeat, the history of Christian ministry 
is full of people, full of stories of people who have been called, greatly used by God, impacted many lives, and at some point they stumbled and fell. I am reminded of a song that was sung by some olden day preacher in Malayalam, my mother tongue, which I had been desperately fearing as I started my ministry 47 years ago in 1976, or 44, or whatever it is. And I started my ministry straight after my university graduation in 1976. And these words of the song, I used to sing very often because I feared what that writer of the song was singing. And I tried to translate that roughly like this. Many who are stronger than me, many who were more devout than me, have fallen and perished ahead of me in this battlefield. I see the numerous skeletons of those who have fallen ahead of me. And it is, it is a terrible sight, Lord. Hold my hands and lead me safely through. I personally do not need to remind you of such names of, na names of those who have fallen before us, both in the scripture and in our history. Each of us would be familiar with such many such stories. Dear graduates, I want to remind you today, Peter's reminder to us to make sure of your calling and election all the more sure so that you will not stumble. Okay, I hope you would have noticed that in the passage. If you do this, you will not stumble. That's what Peter has uh, reminded us. You know, uh, so, Peter's reminder to us to make sure of our calling and election all the more sure so that we will not stumble. Do you want to be spared the risk of stumbling and falling? Or do you want, let it fall, let me fall if it happens, okay. Or do you want to be protected and safe? Then be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. Okay, I'm just exactly quoting the scripture. If you do these things, you will not fall. Make sure of your election and calling all the more sure. If you do these things, you will not fall. And what is this calling and election? What is it all about? When we talk about election and calling, it is, a, it is a map of a journey. We are chosen into a journey. journey. We are brought into a journey. It's a calling for a purpose and with a destination. We find numerous examples of God's call in the scripture, including those of Noah, Abraham, Moses, many of the judges, King Saul, King David, and it goes on. But I want to limit my thoughts today primarily to the text that was read to us. There is a list of things that Peter gives which characterizes an active Christian life or a life of discipleship. These tips, steps are listed as means of effective and productive knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we read that in verse 8. Uh, the rest of the, all those characteristics, so many of them, I think we have already read. I am not going to repeat that again. In other words, there is a continuous growth in Christian character building, which is a hallmark of a Christian. We are people who are continuously building our life, our character. And that is what marks a Christian. But all of this has a beginning. That beginning is from a calling from a sinful life, which was doomed for, to destruction. Peter reminds us, reminds those who do not have these qualities, okay, which we listed, you know, to your faith and then uh, love and godliness, brotherly kindness and all of that. If you do not have these, Peter says, you are nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. So the calling begins with a calling from a sinful life to a redeemed life. In other words, if we have to keep our knowledge 
and experience of the Lord Jesus Christ productive and effective. Again, I'm taking that from the text. If we want to, if, if we have to keep our knowledge and experience of the Lord Jesus Christ productive and effective, we should make sure that our calling, make sure of our calling, which was a calling from a past sinful life to a redeemed life. You know, in uh, Second Peter chapter two and uh, uh, verse ten, it says like that. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager. Sorry, I'm reading uh, verse nine. If anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind, and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. So, uh, if we are not what we are because of the virtue of, the, of our virtues or our works, but we should never forget that we are sin, sinners cleansed by, of, cleansed from our sins by the blood of Christ. The well-known late evangelist Billy Graham has titled his biography as a big book. I have a copy of that. The title of the book is Just As I Am. Both going by his own perspective of his approach to God, as well as the hymn that always characterized in all his crusades, which began with Just As I Am, with what, without one plea. We should not forget from where God has called us. He has called us out of our sinful life and cleansed us from our sins and redeemed us into a community which keeps transforming ourselves, which uh, called us into be, to be people who keep adding to our spiritual values, adding to our spiritual character. So friends, as we eagerly attempt to make our calling and election all the more sure, one thing that we can ne never forget is that we are called out of sinful past into a redeemed life. But we are also called into that life so that we will continue to grow in our spiritual life and experience of our Lord Jesus Christ. We'll continue to grow in our experience of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing Jesus more and more personally is what happens in our spiritual journey as each day passes by. If that is not happening, we have to ask the question about the assurance of our calling and election. We are called and chosen for a journey with our Lord Jesus Christ for the rest of our life. You may wonder why I am focusing so much on our personal spiritual life and experience with Christ on an occasion of a valedictory service. But I say this because I am almost convinced that the greatest problem among the huge multitude of Christian workers today is a failure to have intimate and personal walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I was just thinking uh, this uh, in my thoughts. In all the seminaries, we teach so much and we use our intelligence, our abilities, our reading, our knowledge to convince us all, you know, all that we are teaching. We use our brain, our intelligence, our learning with all our reasoning to convince the truth of God, truth of God's word. But the moment we step out, we disprove all that we taught by our very life. We convince everybody with our words and our intellectual experience. But the moment we step out, we disprove all that we have taught. That is why I felt it's very, very important that we focus on our personal walk with Christ. What is the destiny of our calling? Now, I mentioned about what is expected in our calling and our election. The destiny of our calling. Peter does not conclude his reminder of confirming our calling and election by listing our transformation that happens here in this world. Now, he just did not list all the things that should happen. And that is how you should, uh, con you know, that is what will happen when you confirm your election and calling. He goes on further. He goes another step further. And, you know, let me repeat the two verses that are the focus of our meditation today, verse 10 and 11. Therefore, my brothers, you know, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. 
Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. And one more thing, and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there is something beyond. Now you will receive uh, a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are not called to establish small earthly kingdoms of our own domi domi dominions or domains. Friends, each of us who are getting into ministry, make sure of your calling and election. Know that you are not called and elected to establish your own kingdoms, whatever form it is. We are people called to be partakers with Christ in his eternal kingdom. These empires, kingdoms on this earth will perish. Our ministry and our life should be directed heavenward. We should be servants of God whose mind is stayed on things eternal, things in heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2 reads this. Since then you have been crucified, raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. We are ambassadors for the eternal kingdom of God. But most of the news that is often heard about the church today is about the great struggle of the Christian workers and leaders for the earthly kingdoms, whether it is a church, denomination, organization, or institution. We have ceased to be ambassadors of the kingdom of God, which is eternal, where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. What each of you want to set as the focus of your life? Can we try to ignore the calling of this world and all its glories and focus our minds towards the higher calling and election that has brought us into the fold of Christ. Because we often fail to do that, we stumble. We forget to recollect, recall our calling and election. Our minds, our hearts, our eyes are focused on the things of this world, and we stumble. The world may call you as a fool. Now I will get a little more into a personal aspects of my own life, just for encouragement. The world, the world may call you fool. I remember at least two occasions, you know, many occasions, but at least two occasions where I chose to hold on to my priorities in life, which essentially meant that I would be losing a lot of earthly benefit, which lit, uh, uh, when literally I was called Fool, okay. physically, literally looking at my face, people have told me, you are a fool. These are people who thought they cared for me, you know, not that they were in my enemies. But the problem was that they were not so much conscious of the greater reward that I was longing for when I said no to some of the earthly benefits that were on my way. We know the parable shared by the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, which reads thus, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that little field. A man sells everything he had, including his house and possessions, to buy a small piece of land. Sure, we will also call him a fool, unless we know of the hidden treasure that was his ultimate attraction of the man. It sounds that it was not because this man could not have gained enough to buy the piece of land without selling all his possessions. He could, I, it looks like he could have, but it is written, he sold everything because of his joy of what he is going to get. This is how the attitude of each Christian worker should be. When we walk, make our calling and election sure, 
we are looking forward to the eternal kingdom and reward from the hands of the Lord. When we make our calling and election sure, we are ready to receive a rich welcome. I'm quoting from the scripture read to us. We are ready to receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So our hearts and minds are set on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Let me come to a conclusion here. We all know mothers are very important in our lives. Some of you might not have had such experiences, but still we all know how important is a mother. There is a very special singer who sang about his hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the song included lines about his mother too. I'm sure most of us are familiar with that hymn. He sang like this. This world is not my home. I'm just a passer through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Then he goes on to say about his mother. I have a loving mother just hovering up in glory land and I do not expect to stop my journey. I'm adding that word. I'm, I don't expect to stop until I shake her hand. She is waiting up for me in heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world, you, world anymore. Oh Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me in heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Jim Reeves died in 1963, I think at the age of 41. I will now tell a story from my personal life, which I hope will not be objectionable to any of you. This story is again about my mother. Little bit background. There was a time when I felt I lost my ability to go forward in life. But I was so keen on serving the Lord and I was adamant at it. After my graduation, I tried to get into Union Biblical Seminary to secure an admission for BD. I wanted to study only in UBS. I applied after my university graduation, but I was denied admission. I went to mission field among the Adivasis as a missionary of my chest. Next year, I applied again. Again, the answer came, sorry, we cannot grant you admission. I was denied again. By now, two of my father's brothers who were teachers in seminaries, two different seminaries in America. They kept inviting me to come to America to study. I kept refusing. One of the reason was those two also went to study and they never returned. I didn't want to follow that example. Third year I applied again at UBS. Again, got declined. And I was very frustrated, not really. I said, okay, Lord, whatever you want, let it be. Anyway, finally, after UBS started the classes in 1980, academic year, 80, 81, and it was two months into the academic year, I got a telegram from the registrar asking, come immediately, admission granted. And I graduated and I was in the mission field. Soon both my parents and after retirement moved to the US to be with my younger brother and my elder sister. After some time, my parents came to visit me in the mission field. One morning, my mother called me and told me this. Son, last night I saw a dream. I was in heaven by the side of the Lord Jesus. There were people from all over the world, many of whom I knew. These are my mother's words. Some with PhDs, some with high positions, some with big houses and some with great names and reputation. I knew my son doesn't have any of this. But I kept looking for my son. He was nowhere to be seen. But soon I heard a noise in a corner far away. I saw a large number of people shouting hallelujah and coming near. 
And I looked carefully. There was a short man in the middle of the crowd. It was difficult to see him. I carefully looked. And so it was my son. He was coming to the Lord with all the people he won for the Lord. Then my mother told me, my son, don't look for anything that the world can offer you. Bring people to offer at the feet of Jesus. My mother died in 2005 and went to be with the Lord. She died in my hands. I can sing with Jim Reyes today again in the same words. I have a loving mother just hovering up in glory land. <clears throat> and I don't expect to stop until I shake her hand. She's waiting up for me in heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh Lord, you know, I have no friend like you. If heaven is not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me in heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Therefore, I'm reading again from the text. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us remember that we are called out of our sins to a personal walk with Christ, experiencing him and enjoying him in our journey. Let us know that the destination of our journey is eternal presence of our Lord, where we will be with him. So let us not put our heart and mind on things on this earth. Rather on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Thank you. God bless you. I commit you into the hands of the one who, called, who has called you. The one who called you is faithful. He will also keep you firm to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, 1 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9. May God bless you and use you abundantly. Thank you so much, Achen, for the wonderful word that you have spoken to us this morning on why we will not fall and what is our calling and the destiny of our calling. And thanks Achen, once again for speaking to us with the powerful word of God. A ship looks gorgeous in the harbor, but that's not the purpose of the ship. And the ship has to be sailed in the ocean and to see lots of unknowns. The only thing that ship needs to do, follow the command of the captain. So now you have listened to the word of God, follow the command of the captain. And this is the time for us to call the graduates for the commitment. And I would like to request all the graduates to come and stand in front of the podium. And I would like to request the senior vice president and also from the faculty side, Reverend Dr. Paul Ebenezer to read the commitment reading. I would like to request all the graduates to come stand in front of the podium. Please come and stand, line up. Before we even uh, read the commitment, I do have a passage that I would like Karan to project it. And I want, uh, I'm going to read it, but I want all of us to focus on it. Hindustan Bible Institute stands for one thing. It's the word of God. I'm not sure how many of you have brought your Bibles with you. Our name itself is Hindustan Bible Institute. If we are going out from here, I'm not only talking to the graduating class, I'm talking to the entire family of HBI. I know many of you have brought your phones, but I don't know how many of you have really brought the Bible. You may say I have the Bible on the phone. I truly do not like it personally because um, that's we, we need to really have, it's a privilege to hold the word of God in our hands. When we read the commitment, I would like all of us, especially the graduating class, uh, to read what is said here. It's from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 to 15. It's going to be a reminder to you. So you will be reading 
the passage that is um, going to be projected. So let me have all the graduating students to read the passage. For the first Timothy chapter four verses nine onwards. Uh, the last verses, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. I would like really for uh, the graduating class to take this and write it somewhere and read it every day. The investment that God has kept in your life is for you to represent him and reveal yourself to others. May I ask uh, Dr. Paul Ebenezer also to kindly come so that uh, he can. Dear graduates, you have grown among us through the years, worshipped with us and now accomplished in completing your work. Importantly, we, rec we recognize you as member, mature, committed servants of God, taking your place among us in the church and society in the world. We have seen you grow and develop into young men and women with skills and abilities that we have proudly watched you occur. We rejoice that you have been a part of us and are with us now as we recognize you this day. Some of you as parents and teachers have been instrumental in their growing, teaching and sharing with them your belief and knowledge, moments of encouragement and growth, experience of the responsibilities of life. You can read that one. We have shared with you what God has shared with us, the hope for the life, the blessings and the knowledge we have in this world where we live, we have tried to share with you the love and concern for life the Almighty has given. It is a promise we have for you, a promise to pray that we will honor and remember you always to grow and develop the skills to do with the will of God for his kingdom. You, our graduates, have learned and grown. Soon you will celebrate your accomplishments as a class of young men and women. We pray that you will remember our witness and sharing, that you will develop your skills for the betterment of the church and the world, that you will witness with us what you have received from the Lord. May I have the graduating class to read the last. Uh... We will grow, we will develop, we will cross the summer spirit. We pray that we can use our abilities to serve in the care of our communities and for all in the bank. May I ask the graduating class to turn around and face the congregation and the graduates of the fall of the race to pray for the graduating class. May I have all the community kindly stand and stretch your hands. Let's make a commitment to pray for them because they are getting into the world as the servants of Christ, ministers of God. And we are commissioning them to get into this world so that they will carry the word of God, reveal Christ in all areas. Let's pray. Father, we praise you and thank you for this day. We thank you because you have called us. We thank you because you have given call within a call for this young men and young women who are standing at the stands of your Father. Father, we thank you for the different capacities and abilities that you have given our Father. We thank you for the spirit of learning. We thank you for the spirit of discernment of Father. We thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon the skin men and the end women of Father. Father, in this moment, we come before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you for the call and the election that you have placed upon the lives of Father. 
as the same men and the same women stand here in your holy place after having accomplished the task that you have given them, O oh Father. Fulfilled all the requirements that you have given to them, O oh Father. Father, as they are ready to move out, as they are ready to step into the world, O oh Father, to preach your word, we pray that, Lord, you would divine and be upon them, O oh Father. Father, may your grace be upon them, O Father, as they step out and as they start preaching your word. We pray that, Lord, the divine anointing be upon them, O Father. May they be a channel of blessing to the different places, O Father. May they see a great breakthrough as they step into the different world, O Father. Father, we pray that, Lord, you would bless them, O Father, richly. Father, may the desire come in their lives, O Father. May they fulfill your will, O Father. May your will be a great blessing to their lives so that, Lord, they may place themselves into a will and they may be able to accomplish your task, O oh Father. Father, as HVA community, we thank you because you have given us a privilege and you have given us the time to mold them, shape them, O oh Father. Above all, Father, you molded them, O oh Father. You shaped them, O oh Father. Father, in this moment, Lord, we pray that, Lord, they may move out the flying colors, O oh Father. Father, we pray that, Lord, your blessings, a special blessings be upon them, O oh Father. We thank you for each and every individual, each and every individual's gifts and the talents that you're given, each and every individual's potentials and capacities that you're given, each and every individual's call and the commitment that you're given. Father, use them mightily, O oh Father. May they be used an instrument that will break the onslaughts of the different ports of the precious that they see, O oh Father. Father, we pray that, Lord, you would do an anointing be with them and may they be a great witness in days to come, O oh Father. We commit each and every one of us to your care. In Jesus' name, we pray this prayer. Amen. Thank you. Uh, the graduates may be seated. And thank you, Akka and uh, Paul, sir, for the commitment and also the prayer. And uh, the writers and others used to say, pin, the pin is a powerful weapon. And Apostle Paul says, I'm not an eloquent speaker, but my letters are weighty. And Jesus, when he encountered the temptation, Satan, he said, it is written. So anything that you write that stands for a long time and your writing will continue to speak even beyond your existence on the earth. Our faculty members have researched quite a lot of books and they have thought through and they have put everything into writing. And they have presented their research work in the PG seminars. And we requested them to edit it and write it where we can publish. And Hindustan Evangelical Review, and we publish every year with our faculty members writing. And this is not an easy work. It is a Herculeus job in the midst of teaching. So the faculty members, they committed themselves to writing and they have written so many articles among that. And we have chosen a few on which they have presented in the PG seminar and peer reviewed. And not only our faculty members and also the international faculty members also have contributed to our journal like Dr. Craig Keener. And he has contributed his article. Dr. Phil Bustrom has contributed his article into our journal. And this is the time for all of us to recognize the hard work of our faculty members and to publish their work with our journal. And behind the journal coming out, there are a lot, quite a lot of background work that has been done. And first of all is the writing of the faculty members and the editing. And we had an editorial board who edited uh, quite a lot of uh, articles that has been sent to them. And we got, after the approval of the editorial team, editorial committee, and we got eight articles in our hands. And after which, and we had Sir Paujik who compiled everything, and our senior vice president who worked very hard to get, to get it printed. And this is the day for all of us to unveil the Hindustan Evangelical Review for this year. And I would like to request our chief guest, Reverend Dr. John M. Prasad, to come and to unveil and to dedicate and unveil this journal for this year. And I would like to re request the senior vice president to receive the first copy of this journal. Uh, 
I congratulate the entire team who have worked very hard at it. It's not something that comes by very easily, uh, but all unto glory of God. And so uh, I would like to uh, release this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May all glory be to God. So I request you all to grab the copy of yours and it is available in our academic department and please come and meet us. You have great articles and that will be really helping you to understand the word of God in a deeper level. And now this is the time for us to recognize the hard work of our students and they've been here for three years and we have been evaluating them in the different fields. And as all of you know, Hindustan Bible Institute is not only for the academic excellence and we are interested in the lives of the students and we concentrate in the character formation and the skill development and also the spiritual formation. And we watch them and we walk with them closely. And this day, and we are going to recognize their hard work and give away the awards that they deserve. So there are, we have met for this award for several in the faculty meeting, and it's very difficult to make a choice. And all of you have excelled so much. And we, it was very quite tough time for us to recognize the person whom supposed to give, but if you have not given, but don't regret. And all of you have excelled so well, and but, we are compelled to give only to the few and for all for the glory of God. And we shall start this academic um, validatory service with the award. And I would like to request the senior vice president to come forward to give away the awards. And we gave the academic excellence award. It's not for the topper of the class. And even if you get 60% and you can be a topper of the class, but and HBI, and you need to have you need to have 70 plus in your marks. You should have you should maintain 70 plus. Only those individuals will get the academic award. Uh, such individuals are going to be given now. And Mr. Shimre, and I would like to request Mr. Shimre, please come forward for the academic excellence award for the year 2018, 2021 from the MD batch. And from the missiological department, it is Ms. Bandana Das Pariyar, the Academic Excellence Award for 2019-2021. And from the New Testament department, it is Mr. Lal Sangmai Waipai for the Academic Excellence Performance for the year 2018-2021. And as I have said earlier, and we are not only here for the academic excellence, and we are also here to recognize the students who are excel in other area of their life, especially the spiritual formation and the leadership development, so on and so forth. And this year, the, we HBI always recognize the servant leadership. And this year we would like to recognize Mr. Samson I as the, the servant leader of the year 
And the spiritual formation award, and it is for the student who never fails to attend any of the spiritual activities. It is Ms. Bandana Das, and who faithfully attended all the spiritual formation department activities, and I would like to request her to come forward. Thank you, Akka. And we have the 2017-2020 batch uh, students who are not here. And I'm going to read their awards in absentia. And if you are watching online, so uh, thankful to God, and the award is goes to you. And Mr. Demin Lal Haukip, and he is receiving the Spiritual Leadership Award in absentia. Please clap your hands. And Mr. Andrews J and receives an Academic Excellence Performance Award for the year 2018-2020 from the Old Testament Department in absentia. And Mr. Anish K, he receives Academic Excellence Award for the year 2017-2020 for MD Batch in absentia. Mr. Satish Kumar V, he receives the spiritual perform performance for the year 2017-2020 from MDiv in absentia. And the Servant Leadership Award for 2018-2020, Mr. Chingringam Hungyo, and he is from MTH New Testament and he receives the award in absentia. And finally, Mr. Gula Joseph Stephen Stanley, he receives the Academics Performance Award for the year 2018-2020 from the Old Testament Department in absence. So I congratulate all those who received the award in this day. I do congratulate the people who have not received the award, but your award is waiting and you will receive it soon. You will be recognized. And thank you so much. And um, this is the time for all of us to have the word of thanks. And I would like to request uh, Mr. Paujik, the faculty of the Old Testament, to come and give the word of thanks. Well, it is a great honor for me to stand before you all this morning to send out a thank you note to people who really took part in making this program and also this academic program successful for this year. Uh, let me start with this program and also go beyond this program to acknowledge some people that I cannot fail to uh, acknowledge. To start with this program, we have our chief guest and speaker, Reverend Dr. John Prasad, with all his uh, imaginable and unimaginable you know, duties in the college and outside. Despite all his busy schedules, he has accepted and he has <clears throat> gracefully addressed to our graduates with a strong encouragement and also a challenging word. We really thank you, sir, and we are grateful for your contribution to this uh, program. The president and vice president of HPI, although our president is not present physically, but his heart is here. And also our senior vice president, not only for giving time for this validatory service, but for uh, the constant sources of energy, love, encouragement for all the students, faculty, and also non-teaching staff, board of directors, taking all the important decisions about programs in SPI and also the uh, life of students. We really are grateful to you for your contribution to this page and also for this program. The faculty team of SBI, because of your ceaseless work, encouragement, your spirit of training others have made this program and also this base a very successful base of students. And thank you for your contribution 
your insightful contribution to this program so that we can conduct it in the most beautiful way during this unfavorable time. ALT members, because of your approval, because of your uh, constant support, and also because of your uh, because of your moral and prayer support for the students, we are able to see this program bidding farewell to the outgoing students. Non-teaching staff and families in the campus, you have been also a source of encouragement, moral support, prayer support, and all that the students have needed in these two or three years of study, you have been constant support for them. Now coming back to the program committee, we are really grateful that even during this unfavorable situation, you have designed the program in the most beautiful way. Now, we have people who, do, who really took some wonderful parts in this program, Reverend Theophilus, despite the fact that we gave him a very short notice, he promptly accepted the invitation to lead the worship. And also our senior vice president, once again, she also promptly accepted to give the facilitating note to the graduates. Mr. Sangmoy and Anita, despite your st exam stress and other pressure, you have done a good job giving your farewell speech, leaving behind a very good message to all of us who will be staying back in the campus and also in this institution. Within the program community, uh, committee, there are some people uh, who took all the great efforts in arranging the awards, in arranging the program uh, sheets that we are using today, the certificates and other details of the program. We really recognize your heart lever and we are thankful to all of you. And also our vice principal, thank you for this wonderful leading in a very graceful style. And we are really grateful for your contribution and also for your beautiful designing of this program as well. And of course, outgoing students without whom we will not be having this program. You have been, you think, you may think that you are students to this institution, but we learn a lot from you. And you are our, the fruit of our heart lever, so to say. So we, you are people to whom we will be looking forward to. And it was a great pleasure learning together with you all. And we all wish you a grand success even in the future. Not only the students who are present in this uh, service today, but even <clears throat> the students of the previous baits. I'm not sure whether you are watching from online, but wherever you are, we really acknowledge your hard lever, your discipline, and your commitment. Having proven to the world that whatever you have set your foot on, you are able to prove it and show it to the world. And finally, but not the least of all. Above all, we give glory, honor, and praise to God who brought us here together in this institution as teachers, students, staff, and also building a very big family in HPI so that we all can learn from one another, teach one another, and having a great fellowship of learning and also for giving us this wonderful privilege of sending our beautiful friends out into the world so that they will 
be able to accomplish the great commission that the Lord has given to us. Thank you all. Along with the word of thanks note, I would like to add the immense contribution and the hard work of the IT team and led by Sarthudi. And they have been a great support for throughout this year. And we have been recording so many courses and editing is not an easy job, it's a mammoth work. And he, uh, Sir Tudis and his team and the staff members, they took it on their shoulder and they did a really, really good job and because of their help, and we were able to complete this academic year. And will you all please put your hands together and appreciate the IT team. And, and also Robert and his uh, contribution. And he has been a backbone to many places, especially even for today's program. And I have requested him only the last week and he readily accepted, okay, don't worry, we'll take care. And he came and uh, all the media support and that has been rendered unto us from Robbie and his team. And let us put our hands together and thank Robbie and his team. And also the hospitality team and they have arranged the refreshment for all of us and as we go and have them and thank you the hospitality team and thank you so much and now and we cannot forget the maintenance team as well and they have been taking care of the hostel and they have been taking care of the campus led by Sundaran and team and and Kesaran and team have been upholding us in prayer especially the networking team and they have uh, opened up the new link where we can post our prayer requests and they have been praying for all of us so HBI as a family, we all work together for the glory of God. And let us all put our hands together and we'll, and give thanks and let glory and honor goes to God and God alone. And thank you one and all. And let us close this service with a word of prayer. And once again, I would like to request the graduates to stand wherever you are. Then I would like to request Reverend Rito Racharya, the coordinator for the professional studies to come and close us with a word of prayer and benediction. Precious and Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this wonderful time. Thank you for being with us. Lord, you have been doing great things in our life for the past one year, oh Father. Lord, we are celebrating this moment with, you, with the great cherishing memories. Lord, we are celebrating this wonderful service, oh Father. We are celebrating your faithfulness. Lord, we are so grateful to be experiencing your love, care, protection all these days. Lord, especially we want to commit our students as they are ending one academic year and entering into a new beginning of Father. Lord, you bless them, be with them, guide them as they are entering into your mission field. Lord, we also pray for the blessings that you have showered on them, especially, O oh Lord, we pray for the people who are involving by motivating and being inspiration in their life, O oh Father, especially we remember our president, our senior vice president, ELT members, faculty, staff, and each and every one of the members of HBA family who are being the greatest inspiration in their life. They have invested their time. They have invested their Lord, expertise in these young men and women's mind of father. Lord, as they are enabling themselves to move forward into the world, Lord, bless them. The world is with full of chaos, with full of confusions. Lord, there are sufferings. There are various controversies and differences. Lord, as we are sending our students into the world, be with them, guide them, protect them with providing the proper counsel of Father. Lord, you have set forth an example by sending your disciples into the world to accomplish, accomplish your mission, as we are also sending our students into the mission field to be the fruitful servant of your mission. Lord, once again, we commit ourselves Thank you for this wonderful service. You enable us to come together, to worship you, to adore you, and to give thanks to your Father. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of our God the Father, fellowship, and the union of our Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.
Thank you all, and thank you so much for coming and gracing the occasion. And the refreshment is served at the down. In the coffee corner, please go and have your refreshment. And please never forget to pray for our graduates. Continue to remember them in your prayer. Thank you all. God bless you.